Hello everyone, I'm Leslie Simpson, Events Director for the ACFE. It is that time of year. We are gearing up for our 29th Annual Global Fraud Conference being held this year in Las Vegas. We are about to bring some Texas hospitality to Las Vegas to you guys. With a conference this size, there are so many things going on and we continue to add things year after year. Our goal is to make sure you know everything to ensure you're able to have the best global fraud conference experience you possibly can have. So in this webinar, we are gonna take you through the entire conference. We are gonna start with planning, planning your trip, thinking through the dinners you wanna have, what you need to pack, all of that good stuff uh, to get, get yourself to Las Vegas. From there, we'll, we'll give you updates on where, when registration opens and, and how, when you get there, what, what's the first thing that you do. We'll highlight our conference schedule and, and pull out any of the major things from that day that you need to know, each of the days. All of the happenings that are gonna be going on in our exhibit hall, uh, as well as any networking tips that you would need. We have a jam-packed conference and a lot to cover. So next up, we'll talk with Courtney, who will give you more information on our conference community. Hi, my name is Courtney Howell, and I am the community manager at the ACFE. And this year's conference will be my second conference. Um, I'm going to talk to you about our online community and our conference group within that community. Basically, if you're a member, you have access to the ACFE community and if you're registered to attend this year's conference, you are automatically added to a group in the community with all of your other conference attendees. So it's a great place to get to know people who are going to be there, kind of do a little pre-networking, um, plan some meetups, uh, and get to know who all is going to be there and who you might want to meet in person. Um, and with that in mind, we also have a giveaway going on to kind of help inspire you and your fellow attendees to plan these meetups in advance. Basically, the idea is that you can start a thread that says, let's meet, and then it has the type of group that you'd wanna meet with. So say you wanna meet people who are into data analytics. You could say, let's meet data analytics, or let's meet uh, Pennsylvania, people from Pennsylvania. Um, basically, whoever you want to meet, you can start a, a group and start organizing that meetup. Um, if you don't like to organize things, you don't have to start a thread. You can just join one of the threads that are already up and going. Um, we have plenty of threads already. One is just like a general thread of people who want to meet up for dinner. We also have some more focused threads on um, people who are entrepreneurs, maybe starting their own business. So there's already a few options in there if you want to go check it out um, and basically on Monday uh, the Monday of the conference we're gonna hold a drawing for two $100 gift cards and two of these groups will win a gift card to help sponsor their meetup so basically we just want you guys to meet each other and get the most out of your conference and this is just a really great way to do that another thing we have in the community is some frequently asked questions posts so if you want to know about the conference app, if you want to know uh, what the book signing schedule is, if you want to know where the social networking lounge is and everything that's going on there, we have a bunch of posts explaining everything you need to know. So it's a really great place with a lot of information all in one spot for you to go check out. Um, and the last thing I'm going to tell you is my personal pro tip for uh, first time conference attendee. It's really fresh in my mind since last year's conference was my first one. I would say the number one lesson that I learned last year is that I needed to drink a lot more water. So my biggest recommendation is make sure you're actually drinking water. <laughs> We're going to be providing you with some water bottles in your conference bag and there will be water stations located in the exhibit hall. For you to fill those up anytime you'd like and it's just a really good idea in the desert to drink a lot of water all right that's it for me next up john loftus is going to tell you about the conference app and tips for getting around las vegas hello everyone 
My name is John Loftus. I'm the events manager. This is going to be my 12th conference. My first was the 17th annual back at the Venetian in Vegas. I'm excited to be coming back to Vegas again. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the conference app and then also provide you a few tips for getting around Las Vegas. There's a lot of things going on at the conference at the same time. We have multiple tracks going on at the same time, keynotes, lots of things going on in the exhibit hall. It's really hard to keep everything organized on paper. So the conference app gives you the ability to keep up with everything that's happening at the conference. It gives you an opportunity to report your CPE pens so you don't have to write them down. If you have the tendency to lose paper notes like I do, that's a great thing. There's uh, some networking components to it. So I'm going to talk a little bit of, about that and give you a few tips for using the conference app. First, where do you get it? The conference app is available. There are a couple different ways to get it. You can go directly to acfeevents.quickmobile.mobi and it provides you with three links. One to the Apple Store, the second to the Google Play Store, and then the third to a mobile app, and that's mobile app website. That's for anyone who can't install an app on their phone or if you, you're still holding on to your BlackBerry, that's the version of the app you'll, you'll want to use. Uh, alternatively, if you uh, don't want to go directly to that link, you can just open up whatever app store you use and search for ACP events. And that's how you install the main app. Next, you're gonna log into the app, and what you'll do is, when you open the app the first time, you click the 29th Annual Conference, and after you do that, you'll click First Time User Create a Password. What's gonna happen is, the system's gonna send a temporary password to the email address that you registered with. You can use that then to log in, and the app will ask you to review your privacy settings. Um, in the event you don't have access to that email address, we can help you out beforehand if you mem email member services at acp.com or on site feel free to stop by the conference app help desk and we can help you set up your password there once you logged in you'll notice uh, the app's a little bit different this year if you've used it before there's an activity feed which is more in line of what a what you would normally see on social media where you can see things that are happening people commenting it's a good way to kind of see what all is happening and connect with people. Um, at the top left hand corner there's going to be uh, the hamburger menu so if you click that it'll expand and you can see all the different features within the app. I'll highlight a few of the things there's a lot in there. Uh, as I mentioned before reporting your CPE is somewhere you're probably going to spend a lot of time. Um, if you click on that you'll just type in the four digit pen code and then it will tell you that you've confirmed that CPE for that session. Other really helpful things in the app are the full schedule and then the my schedule functionality. If you set up your breakout sessions ahead of time online, then those should already be within the app. Um, if they're not, you can go into full schedule and you can favorite the sessions you want to attend and then that will be added to your my schedule section. From a networking standpoint, there are a few things in the app I think that are great for networking. And one of the reasons I, I really hope you use the app is to help you kind of find out of all 3,000 people, it's really hard to do this on foot, and go through and find exactly who you want to meet. I think the app's a great place to do that, quickly kind of meet within the app, and then I hope you connect in person somewhere along on, in the event. Um, one of the ways to do that is we've created uh, a few networking groups, and they're the same themes that we have on the, the industry networking tables within the general session, where you can go in and post topics, and people can reply to comments. Um, so that's a good way to find people who are or we're looking to meet people with the same interest as them. There's also a like-minded functionality within the attendee directory. So if you go in, edit your profile, and select your job and industry, it will show similar people to you uh, in the attendee directory. Another thing that's very important to improving the conference every year is the breakout session surveys. So if you look within the app, it's a really convenient way to quickly submit your feedback and help us to improve the conference every year. So after each session you attend, you can go into the app 
choose the session surveys from the menu and complete those within the app, quickly providing your feedback. Your conference materials are available in the app. The papers are available the week before the conference, and then the slides will be available the day of each session. There's some interactive maps. There's an exhibitor map. There's different, we're gonna be on two different levels of the Mandalay Bay Convention Center. Uh, so anytime you look at a session within the app, you can click on the location and it will show you a little pop-up map on where that's located. Alternatively, if you're looking for specific exhib exhibitors, you can go to the exhibitor section of the app and then click on their booth number and an interactive exhibit hall map will pop up showing you exactly where the exhibitor is within the exhibit hall. Uh, other things that you can do in the app, there's a contact exchange. So if you meet someone, each of you is assigned a pen code, which you can see if you go to contacts from the menu, you type in that person's pen code and it'll save them to your contact section. And it's a very high level view of the app. There are a lot of features in it. And if you want to talk more about it, if you want to learn more about how to use it, if you're having issues logging in, if you're having issues installing, please stop by and see me at the conference app help desk. That'll be located near registration on level two, and the hours will be the same as registration. So feel free to stop by, and I'd be happy to help you out with the app. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about getting around Las Vegas. The great thing about Vegas is it's such a big tourist destination that it's very easy to get around. The airport is about five miles from the hotel. It's a typically a 10 minute cab ride on a good traffic day. Taxis, typically taxi fares $16 to $20 uh, from the airport. Taxis are available. Um, at Terminal 1 is going to be outside exits 1 through 4. And for Terminal 3, it's going to be on level 0. There's also uh, dedicated areas for ride sharing. So if you prefer Lyft or Uber, you can pick those up at Terminal 1. If you head to ter the Terminal 1 parking and take the elevator to 2M, you can pick up ride sharing there. Or if you're in Terminal 3, you can head to T3 parking and take an elevator down to the valet level. There's also a shuttle pickup available. So if you're taking something like Super Shuttle, the cost for those are typically about $7 to $8 per person. Uh, those pick up at Terminal 1 at exit 7 to 13. I mean, that's pretty much it from getting to the airport to the hotel. It's, it's relatively easy to do. Getting around Vegas, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Um, there are free trams that run from Mandalay Bay to the Luxor to the Excalibur, and also Monte Carlo to the Aria to Bellagio. Um, so those will be good ways to get around quickly. Uh, there's also a monorail um, outside of MGM. It's a little bit of a trek. You've kind of got to take a free tram, a little bit of a walk. But that monorail starts at MGM and goes all the way to the end of the strip of the stratosphere. So it's a good option if you plan on doing a lot on the other end of the strip. I think a day pass for that's about $13, so it's a good value. There's also a hop-on, hop-off bus, the RTC bus. I believe it's called the Deuce. It's $8 for a 24-hour pass, $20 for a three-day pass. Uh, they also have a new app. I think it came out last December. I haven't used it yet, but I've heard it works pretty, pretty well. So that might be something worth checking out. M my tip really has more to address what you're taking back with you to the office. Getting the most out of your sessions. I, I recommend at the end of every day, sitting down and reflecting on the sessions that you attended, Think about the top three takeaways from each of those sessions. What are things that you can use to make yourself a better fraud fighter or you can take to your job that's going to make you better at what you're doing and write those things down right away so that that way when you get back to the office and you're looking at your notes, you can take those ideas and implement them right after the conference and really start getting the most out of your attendance at the conference. Next up, Jeanette Levy is going to talk to you about what to eat, what to do, what to wear, what to pack, 
all the fun stuff that comes along with going to Vegas. Hello, Jeanette Levy here, Vice President and Chief Operating Officer for the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners. I've been here 26 years and counting. That means I've been to more than a few annual conferences, 24 to be exact. And I'm excited, I hope you are too, about the 29th Annual Fraud Conference in Las Vegas. ACFE continues to add more opportunities for learning and networking every year. Las Vegas is an exciting city. It's still the gaming capital of the world, but it's also morphed into more of an entertainment mecca with just a plethora of shows and attractions, world-class restaurants. The city is bursting with celebrity chefs. It's no longer just a city for cheap buffet lines. There are plenty of dining options within Mandalay Bay, so if you don't want to leave Mandalay Bay, you don't have to. Fine dining include places like Strip Steak, the Foundation Room, RM Seafood, and there's a place called Ario, uh, which has a wine list of over 3,000, and you can even have a wine angel uh, use a high line to retrieve your bottle of wine. You can watch this on the Mandalay Bay website. I've been there once. It's a great restaurant. What I also like about Mandalay Bay is they have many lower cost options. So if you're in the mood for something casual like a burger or a pizza, there are lots of those options, even a food court. And you'll find those places, most of them between the hotel and the convention center. If you go to Mandalay Bay website, you can view the menus for all the restaurants. I do recommend if you choose one of those uh, finer dining options to make a reservation in advance. Las Vegas is a popular place for going out to dinner. And I also would like to um, share a few of my favorite shows and attractions with you, depending on what your schedule is. You, you certainly can't beat Las Vegas for a big show production and they actually have something for everybody. Comedy shows, magic shows, concerts. I recommend any of the Cirque du Soleil shows and right there in Mandalay Bay is one of my favorites, Michael Jackson One. If you have any free time, I highly recommend that show. I also recommend the Cirque du Soleil Beatles Love at the Mirage and O at the Bellagio. If you're into quirky comedy, there's Blue Man Group at the Luxor, which is next door to Mandalay Bay. And there's Jabberwockies at MGM, which is across Las Vegas Boulevard. Magic shows, David Copperfield is still doing his show in Las Vegas. Penn and Teller, I believe they're at the Rio. And uh, Chris Angel at the Luxor, again, next door to Mandalay Bay. I would take a look at uh, Vegas.com for a full list of, well, actually start at Mandalay Bay's website for their entertainment options because in addition to uh, Michael Jackson, you also have the Shark Reef Aquarium at Mandalay Bay, House of Blues uh, Music Hall, and Mandalay Bay Event Center. I, did, I don't remember who's scheduled for the event center. I know the band Sugarland will be there Saturday night. And then the Mandalay Bay Pool. I'm very excited uh, to visit the Mandalay Bay Pool. It's been voted one of the best pools in the U.S. with a wave pool and about, what, 2,700 tons of sand that they brought in so you feel like you're on the beach. If you exhaust all your options at Mandalay Bay, and you wish to venture further afield, there's a magnificent top golf facility that's next door to MGM. You can take a gondola ride through the canals of the Venetian. There's a Shelby Car Museum that I'm told is just a short cab ride from MGM and they give free tours. I like the Titanic exhibit at the Luxor. Or how about a helicopter ride down the Strip? Do that at night so you can see all the lights of the city. And lots and lots of free things to take in if you've never been to Las Vegas before. There's a 
volcano show at the Mirage. I love the Bellagio fountains at, uh, well, at the Bellagio outside. It, those two things are free. And the Bellagio fountains run every 30 minutes in the afternoon, and I believe every 15 minutes after 8 p.m. If you do make your way to the Bellagio, walk into the hotel lobby and look up at the Chihuly glass ceiling for just this magnificent sculpture in glass that'll take your breath away. And then walk straight back from the lobby to the conservatory for a seasonal display made entirely of flowers and plants and trees. The Bellagio is one of my favorite places to visit. Again, um, check Vegas.com for a full list of entertainment and attractions. Decide what free time you have and go ahead and select your must-dos. I would also recommend make, uh, making reservations for any shows in advance because they do fill up, especially the Cirque du Soleil shows. So what else can we talk about? Uh, maybe what to, what to bring with you. Of course, you need your conference attire, and then you're going to need your casual attire. It is hot, hot, hot in Las Vegas, so if you're planning to be outside, think about shorts, t-shirts, lightweight, summer attire. I would recommend a hat. Don't forget the sunscreen. And if you're going to be out the pool with me, bring you all of your pool wear, cover up flip-flops. Now, during the day, during the conference, our dress code is business casual. Uh, temperatures in the conference center usually run a little chilly. I like to bring a lightweight blazer or a lightweight sweater. But most importantly, we need to talk about your shoes. Do not underestimate how much you'll be walking at this conference, just the distance from your hotel to the convention center. And then once you're at the conference, you'll be walking back and forth from your breakout rooms to the exhibit hall to the general sessions. If you have a pedometer app, turn it on. You'll probably be surprised how many miles you're walking every day. Bring comfortable shoes and bring several pair of comfortable shoes. Do not, under any circumstances, bring new shoes. When you arrive at the conference, uh, when registration opens on Sunday afternoon, you will be given a name badge. And this is important because this is your ticket in. It's your ticket in to all of the conference sessions and all of the conference activities. So don't forget that every morning. You don't want to have to walk all the way back to your room to get your name badge. We'll also give you a backpack so you can carry all your stuff in it. Um, along with the backpack, we'll give you a notepad for notes. We'll give you a reusable water bottle. It's in the, uh, Las Vegas is in the desert, so make sure you have your water bottle with you. Other things that I'd throw in your backpack, um, phone charger, definitely. I like to throw a small bottle of contact solution in my backpack because it is the desert and my contract, contacts get dry. Maybe a Band-Aid or two in, in case you didn't heed my advice on the shoes and a small bottle of aspirin. But don't, whatever you do, forget your business cards. After all, you're going to be out there with 3,000 other anti-fraud professionals. And the best reason I know to attend a live training is so that you can network and interact with like professionals. So I challenge you to interact, uh, mingle, and greet, and meet as many people as you can. In addition to learning from our many speakers, keynotes, and panelists, you're going to learn from each other because you never know who you're going to meet that might just have that idea or solution that you've been looking for. And by the same token, you don't know who you might meet that you might be able to provide an idea or a solution to. So I hope that you will take my advice and just reach out your hand, introduce yourself, meet as many people as you can, and I hope that includes me. If we haven't met before, I would really love to meet you. So from me to you, here are my two rules. Do not bring new shoes and meet as many ACFE conference attendees as you can. 
And now Mandy Moody is going to share with you registration in detail and some conference schedule highlights. Thank you. Hello, this is Mandy Moody, the content manager here at the ACFE. You typically only hear my voice on podcasts, so I am excited to talk to you today via a webinar about the conference. This is actually my eighth conference. Um, I still remember the first year I went to the annual. I had only been working at the ACFE for one week, and they threw me into the fire and sent me off to Baltimore um, to go to our conference at National Harbor um, in Maryland. So this marks my eighth year, so hopefully I will not be um, near as scared as I was that first year. I'm very excited to share with you two of my favorite topics, um, food and schedules. Food because you need it to get through the conference and schedules because if you don't know your schedule, you will be very lost and you could get overwhelmed. So let's start with food. You will be getting breakfast Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, sponsored by ScanRider. And breakfast will be in the exhibit hall from 7.30 to 8.30. So we give you enough time to make it down there, get your food, and also walk around and network with other people. Uh, you'll also get refreshments during networking breaks. These are sponsored by SAS, and these are also in the exhibit hall. The exhibit hall is very important because it will be where you can eat, where you can get water, and also where you can network and go to some of our specialized networking meetups. You will get lunch on Monday and Tuesday in the general session. These will be working lunches. Uh, you'll get about 40 minutes to eat before we hear from our keynote presenters. And don't forget, uh, you will get a free water bottle that will come in your conference bag now, my pro tip for you about the water bottles is this. The water stations are in the exhibit hall, so make sure you fill up that water bottle when you get there in the morning and when you go during the breaks and during lunch. What uh, happens to me at conferences a lot is I show up ready for water with no cup. So make sure you have your water bottle because it will not be helpful if you just have to put it in your hands. Um, so keep in mind there's food, water, um, hors d'oeuvres, everything you need to stay nourished throughout the conference. So we've gotten food out of the way. Let's start with Sunday. I want to go over what exactly you will be able to experience on Sunday. The first thing, obviously what you want to do when you get there is go to the registration desk. Um, now I have worked the registration desk for the past eight years, and I will tell you, it gets crazy at five o'clock on Saturday and 7.30 on Monday, uh, five o'clock on Sunday and 7.30 on Monday. So here is my tip for you. Go, if you can, if you get there in time, to the registration desk on level two of the Mandalay Bay Conference Center, um, and go on Sunday before four. If you can do it, it is totally worth it. You can skip the lines and get your registration packet, your bag, your water bottle, everything you need to start before the rush gets there. Uh, if you're attending the pre-conference, that will be on Sunday, and those sessions will be from one to four. So those will be, um, there will be three this year, and those will be, those will give you enough time. The first networking event uh, starts at 5.30, so that'll give you enough time in between to take a break if you have those sessions. So networking on Sunday. We have the women's networking reception from 5.30 to 7. We have the new member and first time attendee reception from 5.30 to 6.30. And we have our welcome reception sponsored by EY that is open to everyone from seven to nine. And this is one of my favorite events because the exhibit hall is packed. It is a buzz of activity. Um, and this year we'll have live music by Leroy Parnell and we'll have refreshments, we'll have hors d'oeuvres, we'll have good conversation, games, networking. It will be awesome. This is the 
premier networking event to kick off the conference and really get your feet wet with what's going to be in store for the next few days. So Sunday, get your rest. Uh, the, the reception will go until 9, so I recommend uh, going to bed relatively early because Monday we will start bright and early at 7.30. And again, you'll have breakfast, 7.30 to 8.30, and then we kick off with our opening ceremonies. Um, we will be bringing back the flag procession this year. This um, was something that we were very excited to do. We realized we missed it, so we're going to bring it back. So we will have bagpipes and color guard and the flags from more than 70 countries are represented this year. And Bruce Doris will kick off our opening ceremonies, and then we will hear from Rob Wainwright, the former, former executive director of Europol. See, I got his name right, but then I flubbed on his title. The former executive director of Europol. Um, he led the transformation of the agency into what it is today, a world-class security institution. And he will be talking about his time there and initiating intelligence sharing and really making Europol the coordination center hub for Europe. Uh, here's my pro tip for all of the general sessions. What happens every year is people come to the back and say they can't find a seat. But I have a hint for you. There are always open seats at the front. I know the front can be scary. We will not make you talk. We will not make you get on a microphone and say anything, but go to the front because there will be seats up near the front. And as always, there will be staff available holding up a, an open seat sign in case you, you need some help to find, find a spot. And don't forget about the industry networking tables at the back as well. Um, those will be there if you want to meet with people from your industry. Um, okay, so Monday lunch after you've been to your breakout sessions, we will hear from futurist and AI expert Martin Ford. Martin just released a book, a New York Times bestseller called Rise of the Robots, and he will remind us that robots are going to take over our lives in the near future. Just kidding. Uh, he will be touching on how we can use AI and use technology to help our lives and actually make our work easier, um, and how AI is impacting the anti-fraud profession, which I know is an extremely hot topic right now with machine learning and what can we do with all that data can we use something else to help us organize it, to help us sift through it? He will also be signing books following the lunch session, and his book will be available for purchase in the ACFE bookstore. All right, that's Monday. Let's talk about Tuesday. Tuesday, the first general session in the morning, 8.30, we will actually hear from two speakers in this session. Um, I'm excited about these two speakers. So Claire Rucastle brown is an investigative journalist who exposed the 1MDB corruption. And if you have been following the news at all, or the Google alerts like we do here at the ACFV, you may have seen that actually the prime minister who Claire Rucastle brown worked to expose was running um, this corrupt fund, the 1MDB fund, he was recently ousted. Um, Najib was pushed out um, after his party's 60 plus years in office, and he's now been replaced by a new prime minister who is actually welcoming <laughs> Claire and the work that she has done. Claire even recently made a trip back to Malaysia after being banned from the country in 2015. So she will be coming to receive an award our Guardian Award, and also to discuss um, her past few years in working with a whistleblower and working to publish all the many reports uh, she did on her website. And that will be very interesting, give us an inside look at exactly what happened and also what's been going on since the new developments and how that culture might be changing in Malaysia. The next speaker we're going to hear from is Brian Fogel. Uh, Brian recently won an Academy Award for his documentary, Icarus, and we watched the documentary here. I've actually watched it twice, <laughs> and I'll probably watch it a third time just to get ready for uh, writing about his session, but he set out to make a documentary about doping, and he wanted to replicate Lance Armstrong's 
doping regime and how he was able to fool the regulators for so long and so he wanted to try and see if he could do it and if he could get caught <laughs> and if he could uh, compete in a race without getting caught while using a bunch of steroids. What happened was not planned and what he was initially hoping to do with his documentary. Um, it actually turned into him meeting a doctor uh, who was the head of the Russian lab for the Olympics and um, he worked with him to work on the regime and see if he could, how he could use steroids and get past regulators and ended up helping this man uh, who turned into a whistleblower to expose years, and I mean years, of doping within the Russian Olympics going back to, I believe, 1974. Um, so what started as a let's see if we can replicate Lance Armstrong's uh, doping schedule turned into um, helping a whistleblower come to America, expose the scheme that had been going on via the New York Times and with the DOJ here, and also uh, saying farewell to him because he is in witness protection now. So Brian Fogel will talk about his documentary and his time with the whistleblower. So you will not want to miss that. That would be Tuesday morning. Tuesday afternoon, the panel discussion. This is the first time we've done a panel discussion at our event, and we've been seeing this at other conferences, so we wanted to give it a try. But we're going to focus on something that is uh, definitely on people's minds and maybe not talked about as much, but lessons learned after a crisis. Um, we have Catherine McLean as our moderator, and Catherine also is someone we know pretty well. She worked at the ACFB as her, it was her first job out of college, and she went on to go into a career in PR and crisis communications and reputation management. And Catherine will be welcoming Teresa LaPlaca, the head of content management at Wells Fargo, Dr. Andreas Pullman, the former chief compliance officer at Siemens and SNC Lavalin, and Jao Ilek from Petrobras in Brazil, the former chief compliance and governance officer, to talk about um, what they learned after all of their crises and how they're moving forward how they moved forward and what the future looks like for them, the cultural changes that they're implementing, how to win back trust. So this will be, uh, I guarantee, an enlightening panel and a, a great way to hear some candid discussion about how to move forward after something happens. Uh, don't forget on Tuesday, we have our next round <laughs> of a networking reception from five to six Right after your sessions, there will be an attendee networking reception, complimentary to all attendees. Um, and I have in my notes here to say, get your networking on. Uh, there will be refreshments and people and activity. Uh, this is a great way to kind of close out your session before you go to dinner. Um, stop by, get a drink, meet some new people, um, and really take advantage of another time to talk with people face-to-face -face after you know, 360 days in between each conference when we talk on email um, and text, it's, it's always good to get together and get face to face. And that's what we try to do with our events is give you ample opportunity to talk with people. Um, and don't forget, after the networking reception, we have our ACFU Foundation Charity Poker Tournament. This is hosted by the ACFU Las Vegas chapter. It will begin at 6.30 in the Mandalay Bay Poker Room. The buy-in is $125, and all of the proceeds will go to the ACFE's Richie Jennings Memorial Scholarship Program. And this is a way to kind of give back and help future students. The scholarship program awards students who are studying fr um, fraud examination and are looking for a career in fraud examination and fraud investigation. Uh, you also can uh, get a chance to win a main conference registration to the 30th annual ACFE Global Fraud Conference. That will be in Austin, Texas in 2019, um, or the cash equivalent of $600. Uh, so sign up for that. That should be fun. It's a fun way to, again, network face-to-face -face, uh, and try and win some money or win a conference registration. On Wednesday, we will, don't forget, 
you have sessions in the morning and then we'll all get together for our general session after your breakout sessions in the morning and we will have our annual conversation with a fraudster so every year the acfb uh, invites a, someone who has committed fraud to come and discuss their incident and what happened and how it all unfolded their rationalizations really take a deep dive into the fraud triangle and hear from someone who has committed fraud this year will be a little different we'll be doing it fireside chat style so our vp of education john gill who has interviewed many many fraudsters over the past few years will be sitting down with ryan homa a convicted fraudster to talk about uh, his story and exactly what happened um, so you don't want to miss that and then remember on wednesday lunch will be on your own because we end early um, and that closes out the main conference um, i'm super excited to see everybody there we are counting down the days here at the office and next, you will hear from Ross Pry, our membership director, about what is going on in the exhibit hall. Hi, this is Ross Pry, membership director, and I. This will be my eleventh conference. Uh, my first conference was in two thousand seven in Orlando, and uh, I actually have the distinct pleasure of always working in the exhibit hall. I've always been in the exhibit hall, so I'm really excited to be able to talk about uh, the exhibit hall since I. Have always worked it and think it is a, a hub of activity. There's so much going on inside the exhibit hall. I definitely recommend attendees to stop by and, and stop by more than just uh, as a place to pick up your afternoon snack or uh, pick up breakfast and get some coffee. Uh, there's so much going on and I'm going to go over some of those things that are that are in the exhibit hall that I think make it a, a must stop and one of those uh, places that I think you have to kind of come back to over and over again. So first off, we have our exhibitors. There's more than 60 exhibitors this year. And the exhibitors, it's, a, it's an amazing place because they provide you with solutions to help fight fraud more effectively. Solutions and services, there's going to be exhibitors that will uh, provide you with information and tips to help you fight fraud in your daily job. So I definitely suggest coming by and visiting the exhibitors uh, and bring business cards. So make sure you bring business cards because exhibitors are, have a really good habit of having raffles and having giveaways. So uh, you're going to drop your business card in that raffle and we will be having a raffle on Tuesday. Um, so uh, when you're going around talking to exhibitors and learning about their solutions and services, uh, feel free to drop your, your business card in, in the fishbowl or, or get your badge scanned and uh, that'll enter you in some of those raffles for some of the great giveaways that they have. But the exhibitors aren't just there to provide raffles and giveaway items, and they're also there to show you about their services and solutions, and that's why we have a software showcase. Um, so we have specific exhibitors that are going to show you uh, some of those solutions and, and some of their software uh, that they can help you in your jobs. And, and so if you see those demos, I would definitely encourage you to go over to the software showcase and, and check out those demos of the latest fraud fighting tools in action and see how they can help you. There's also the membership booth, which is uh, where I will be posted up for the for the conference. And um, I will also be in the membership booth with Angela Fletcher, our CFE exam coach, and Joey Broccolo, who's our chapter development manager. And between the three of us, we have almost 50 years of combined ACFE experience. So I'm really hopeful that we can answer any question that you have where there's tons of great resources in the membership booth. So if you are, uh, if you need to stop by and, and pick up a new copy of the Report to the Nations, you can do that. Uh, if you're looking for the benchmarking report on um, your fraud investigation team, you can pick that up at the membership booth. Industry compensation guides, those are at the membership booth. Um, and then just general information about ACFE. Uh, we can give you with tips on how to study for the CFE exam. We can also just about answer any question that you have, um, you know, when it's in reference to ACFE and ACFE membership and all things ACFE, uh, we'll be able to answer those in the membership booth. But we're also going to be having some fun. This year we've gotten a green screen photo booth. So if you've ever wanted to be on the cover of Fraud Magazine or you've ever wanted to uh, you be a robot, actually, or if you just want a picture with you and your conference friends in front of the Vegas skyline, you can stop by the membership booth and we will be taking pictures in front of our green screen photo booth, and then you'll be able to share those on social media or print them out if you'd like to as well. 
There's one other aspect of the, the membership booth that I'm really excited about this year, and that's the mentoring program. We've just launched this new mentoring program, and we will be giving away books. So if you are enrolling as a mentor or a mentee, uh, you can do that at the conference, and we'll be providing you with a book. Mentors get one book, um, and then mentees will get a different book. So stop by, enroll in the new mentoring program, and get a book. While supplies last, we'll be able to, to provide those books for you. Speaking about mentoring, the membership booth isn't the only place where we're going to be talking about professional development and mentoring. The professional development booth is also in the exhibit hall, and the professional development center is a place that's going to have a lot of information regarding professional development techniques and ways that you can get ahead in your career or break into the fraud examination career. We have professional work sessions, so if you're looking to you can meet with individually with a, uh, an individual coach and have a private counseling session. It's $30 for 30 minutes. They can be booked online at fraudconference.com slash PDC or in person. So stop by the Professional Development Center and you can book one of those sessions. If you need help with your LinkedIn profile or you need someone to review your resume, you can meet privately with a counselor and they can help you maybe overcome that last hurdle, whether it's, uh, you know, moving up in your current career, uh, making the next step in your organization, or if it's changing careers, or if it's, like I said, breaking into a, um, the career that you're looking for, the anti-fraud field. Speaking of breaking uh, into the fraud examination field, we are having roundtable discussions. So if you're looking for um, a help and you really are interested in, in breaking into the field of fraud examination, you can check out the full schedule in the conference app and those roundtable discussions are taking place in the Professional Development Center. One of the most popular things in the Professional Development Center is the free Professional Headshots, sponsored by Conan Resnick. And there's always a, a really high demand for that, so I'd suggest uh, getting there early, getting your, your picture taken. It's one headshot and print per attendee. But stop by, get your picture taken, because. Uh, it, it's always a good idea to update your LinkedIn profile or, or, or your social media with your newest um, and, and most recent headshot. So that's a, a good thing that we offer in the Professional Development Center for free. And there also are uh, special presentations. So if you're looking for, um, you know, like I said, uh, information on how to get ahead in your career, how to stay ahead, um, you can and stop by the, the, the stage in the Professional Development Center, and there's going to be 30-minute presentations specifically focused on career development. So those are, those are good things to, to attend, and I'll actually be uh, participating and talking in uh, one of those presentations about the mentoring program. So if you have any questions or, or, or need anything about that, feel free to stop by the Professional Development Center, and we can help you out. One of the most popular places in the exhibit hall is the ACFE Bookstore. At the ACFE Bookstore, we have all of the merchandise, books, self-study courses, prep courses, anything that you can think of in terms of resources, manuals uh, for the fraud examination field is going to be available in the ACFE Bookstore. We have a conference bundle for only $99, which includes the Fraud Risk Management Online Self-Study Course, the Fraud Risk Management Guide, and the Fraud Examiner's Manual CD-ROM. So that's a great value for that for only $99. Use that conference bundle and stop by the ACFE bookstore. And every day we're going to have different deals going on, whether it's a Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. There's On Monday, there's 50% off all workbook self-study courses. So um, you'll, you'll see that schedule and stop by the ACFE bookstore to take advantage of those daily deals. We also have book signings. So this is a great opportunity on Monday, for example, Monday morning, to meet uh, President Emeritus Jim Ratley. You can get your book signed, his book, Policing Fraud, My Journey from Street Cop to Anti-Fraud Leader. Buy the book in the bookstore if you don't already have it. Come by, speak with Jim, have him sign it. It'll be a great opportunity for you to, to meet Jim, one of the co-founders of ACFE. Martin Ford, futurist and New York Times bestseller with his book, Rise of the Robots, will also be signing books on Monday and he'll be signing books uh, after lunch on Monday afternoon so that's a come by the bookstore and get your get your book signed after you hear his keynote presentation and then we also have an author meet and greet um, on Tuesday afternoon after lunch there's going to be several authors who have a variety of different books and we're going to be selling all of those books 
in the ACFE bookstore. We're not just selling things in the bookstore, you can also pick up your conference mug. So you're gonna get a coupon that will, you can exchange that coupon for your conference mug. It's a great deal. You bring us a piece of paper, we give you a mug. So come by the ACFE bookstore and exchange that, um, that coupon for your conference mug. If you're like me, whenever you visit a conference, your cell phone is always about to die. And uh, that's why I think the Technology Lounge is a great place. We have charging stations, walk-up charging stations. You can go and, and, and plug in your cell phone. We also have walk-up computer stations. So if you're looking at a work email and you realize it's going to take you a little more than just a, a quick response, we've got computer stations set up so you can type that email and stay connected to the office if you need to. And we do have complimentary Wi-Fi access in the exhibit hall as well. The Fraud Museum is another really popular thing. It's a traveling exhibit. We have a, a, so many really neat historical fraud pieces that uh, we have here in Austin, Texas, and uh, this is your opportunity to see those. So we, get, we will send those. And this year's uh, traveling museum displays some of history's most powerful fraudsters and the havoc they wreck from havoc they wreck on their own towns, organizations, and governments. So it's always a fun place to check out. And if you stop by the Fraud Museum, I would encourage you to take a look at some of those pieces because you have a chance to win a $250 gift card. There's going to be a quiz, and that quiz is in the conference app. So check out the conference app complete the quiz and that'll give you an opportunity to win $250. The last thing that I want to make sure to talk about is the social networking lounge. The social networking lounge is always a lot of fun. They're having a lot of fun over there, whether they're playing games or taking pictures, stop by the social networking lounge. You can follow real time updates at the social networking lounge and you can win prizes. They are giving away a scooter luggage. So that's right. If you want to uh, roll around the airport with your luggage and your scooter. You can do that. As, and uh, if you win that, stop by, drop out your business card. Like I mentioned, make sure to bring lots of business cards. So drop your business card in for a chance to win that. You can also get a pair of ACFE branded sunglasses. All you have to do is post on social media and you'll get an opportunity or you'll get one of those pair of sunglasses as well. In the social networking lounge, they also have topic based meetups. You can check out the full schedule in the conference app, and you've noticed a theme going on. The conference app is going to be a really good resource for you. One of the people that's going to be in that social networking lounge is Courtney, and Courtney is going to be talking about all of the social media taking place in the conference. This is Courtney Howell, the community manager for the ACFE. And I wanted to share a little bit of info about our social media so that you can make the most of it at the conference this year. First of all, you wanna make sure that you're following us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. We'll be sharing conference updates on all of those channels. Um, and then to connect with us and fellow attendees, you can tag us using at the ACFE, or you can use the hashtag that we have, which is hashtag fraudconf. Um, also, just so you know, if you use that hashtag, your tweets will show up in our conference app. It's a really great way to connect with your fellow attendees, see you know, snippets from other sessions that you might have missed out on, great quotes, lots of great content going up on that hashtag. Uh, so again, make sure you're following us, use the hashtag, and we'll see you on our social media. Next up, Leslie Simpson will be closing us out. We have covered a lot of information in this webinar and I hope it has been very helpful to you. I hope you have a good, clear view of the items that you want to make sure you attend or you see at the conference. Here are a few other things. If you need anything when you're at the event, locate an ACFE staff member. We will be wearing our navy blue blazers with the ACFE seal on them. We are very recognizable and every single one of those staff members are here to serve you. We are here to help you. So. If there's anything you need, grab one. And if they can't answer your question, they will find it. They have been instructed to find the answer and get back with you as quickly as possible. Registration opens Sunday night. The lines can be long on Monday morning, so I do highly recommend on if you're around Sunday night, swing by registration, get your registration packet, get your name badge, 
also swing into the welcome reception and and have a little appetizer and a, and a drink. Um, that night we'll be hosting Leroy Parnell, country music musician. Musician, um, he's really great. So if um, if you haven't haven't heard him before, definitely swing into the exhibit hall and listen to some of his music. And then also, of course, all of our exhibitors will be there and they'll be demonstrating their goods and their services. So make a make a pass through and kind of get an idea of what you who you want to give some more time to during the course of the event. Thank you all for watching. We are looking forward to getting to meet you all in Las Vegas. Have a safe trip and we'll see you soon.